Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudal Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to see how we could do API testing with Playwright. You could use uh, the features from Playwright to perform certain prerequisite for your UI test as well. For example, let's say you want to delete a user using UI, but then you want to create a user using API call to save some time. You could do that with the inbuilt features that comes with Playwright. Otherwise, if this feature is not there, you have to use some external libraries like Axios or, or Super Test, something like that. So, which is which is which is what cool about Playwright. Again, uh, you can also use Playwright for your uh, API automation suite separately as well. Even if you don't use any UI, you could use this Playwright for your separate API automation test suite. It is really cool. I have used a lot of uh, API automation tools in in my career. Uh, Postman, SoapUI, um, Rest Assured. Um, I also have used uh, Unirest, um, Cypress, and then Axios and Jest. But I think Playwright uh, is pretty cool. The reason being, it comes with inbuilt reporting. It comes with a trace viewer where you could track back uh, what is the request and response without doing console.logs and all that uh, uh, simple stuff. So this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and start learning them. Uh, it's going to be an interesting video. So in, in our previous examples, what we did was we we used page.root um, to, to, uh, to, to intercept the request that gets triggered at the back, uh, you know, insight when you do run your auto automated UI test. But then if you want to set up some state, if you want to perform a complete new, uh, new API testing suite, you know, all that thing can be done with the help of uh, uh, request. Uh, there is an API request context particular uh, class which we could use this use for this particular need. So I am going to create a new file called as api.spec.ts and uh, here I'm going to import uh, uh, the expects and the uh, test uh, from playwright and uh, I'm going to create a new test called as uh, let's say uh, get api demo and then uh, again guys I'm, I'm using github copilot so you could see uh, some, uh, you know, uh, code already being populated. So don't worry about it. So what I'm going to do, uh, instead of this page context, uh, page fixture, we're going to use the request fixture. Again, you could use, uh, for your automated UI test, you could use both page and page and request if you want. But then in our case, we're going to just need the request fixture because we are just going to deal about, uh, APIs in this particular video. So what I'm going to do, um, I want to take a demo API. For example, I'm going to use this request.in. Most of my use case, I will do this. So for example, let's say I want to make a get call to this particular endpoint. Then I'm going to receive this particular response. Let's let's make a very simple get call and see how this how easy it is. So let's say uh, const response equal to this particular thing. And if you notice, um, this is not the uh, endpoint that we want. So well, let's replace this with, uh, yeah. And I want to pass the uh, path parameters. Right. Uh, so now uh, you, so you could assert the status code, whether the status code is basically equal to 200. Again, it's very important thing to notice is this is again an asynchronous call. So yeah, you have to await the promise uh, to get the response object. Again, you could also uh, print the, uh, let's say I want to print uh, the response body, you could, you could do something like this. And uh, yeah, let's try to run and see what's happening. So I'm going to run this api.spec.ts and the test got passed. Again, you could open the report um, and then you could go to the uh, uh, test. You could see the trace here. You can see what is the request uh, gets triggered. Uh, what is the response being received? Uh, you could also see what is the headers being passed, uh, you know, and all that, right? So that's pretty cool about it. You can also assert a lot of things. Uh, for example, the response has uh, an avatar that is equal to this particular string, right? So let's say I want to assert it. How would I do that? Normally we use JSON path in rest assured. That's going to be the same. So what I can going to do is I'm going to uh, extract this uh, response body as a separate, uh, a variable so that we could assert a lot of things. So uh, so yeah, so you could do this 
right? And uh, you know, for I don't think this will create. Yeah, so this is this is this is going to be correct. Um, so you could assert response email, and the email is basically let's say, um, this is the particular email, right? And uh, and then expect uh, what else we want to assert? I think for me, I want to assert data dot avatar, right? So response response body uh, dot data dot avatar uh, to be um, this particular string, right? And let's try to run the test and see the results. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so the test got passed, which indicates that we are doing everything correctly, right? So this is this is simple JSON path, guys. Okay? So yeah, pretty easy. If you haven't, if you don't know what is a JSON path, you could you can check my APA masterclass playlist. So that's all about it. Let's see uh, more. Uh, let's create a um, uh, post APA demo. Um, and uh, so yeah, so cons response equal to. So this is the particular API slash users endpoint. Um, right? You can, I know you, I hope you, you are aware of this, but then there is a slash API users endpoint. If you pass particular data like this, we are going to get a response like this, right? So let's do more assertion. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I want to also pass body, right? So you could use this particular thing um, and then pass the body. Um, so th there is no, some, something called as JSON. So get a pi go pilot is crazy here, but yeah. So after the data, um, you can also pass, let's say if you want to pass query parameter, you could, you could use this params and then, you know, pass certain query parameters like this. Um, but then in my case, this is a post request, uh, doesn't have a query param, so I cannot do that. But then there are other, other cases here. Let's say if you want to pass form parameters, uh, you can, you can use this particular, uh, stuff. And then you could pass form parameters like this, right? So, so let me uh, revert this. And uh, apart from this, we also have uh, ignore HTTP errors. Let's say if there are some HTTP errors, you want to ignore them. Let's say you want to set a maximum redirect. How many redirects that can happen before the response gets received? You could you could tell the number here, so you can see what is the uh, expectations from it. You can you can either ignore them. Uh, uh, or you could pass a boolean for these or uh, the number for the timeout. For example, the timeout is the maximum time it can take. For example, it can maximum take a 10,000 10, milliseconds. Um, let's say if you put it as zero, it is like in, infinite. It will wait infinitely, which we don't want to do. So uh, put some reasonable, uh, uh, you know, time here. And then um, you could also... Um, try out the multi-part and all that. But then importantly, if you want to pass headers, you could do something like this, right? Right, that's it. Uh, again, this header is optional because um, Playwright by default, if you send an object like this, it will automatically understand that it needs to send a headers like this, okay? So you, you can also pass it explicitly uh, if you want to, but, but then it's not mandatory for you. Um, that's all about it. Let's try to send, hit this request and uh, let's try to assert whether these status is this. Um, again, I want to basically have a JSON equal to a response or JSON. Uh, this is the response body. You could also, instead of asserting a single one by one fields, you could also assert the entire uh, response uh, body itself. So what I can do is uh, expect um, so JSON, the entire JSON, I want to assert the entire JSON uh, to strict equal or to equal, you could use any of that. And you can say expect dot, um, I mean guys, what you can do is you can, you can copy paste this particular request here, but then the problem is uh, the created at field will not match and you cannot predict what it would be. So in those cases, what you can do is instead of using like this, um, you can say expect dot object containing, and then you could do this. And here you could pass uh, something like this. And uh, for the ID, it's going to be generated randomly, right? So what I can do is I I cannot predict the 
uh, exact ones. So I can say expect dot any string. So you can pass this particular uh, assertion if there is any string field here. Let's say if you put a number, it will fail. So okay, apart from that, there is a created at, uh, I also want that to be a string. Just for example, I am just replacing this to be a number and let's hope this test fails. And I just want to run only this particular test. So let's do it. So it says, um, you know, it's uh, fails because the ID, we are expecting the ID to be string, but it is, sorry, expecting ID to be number, but it's string. Let's try to change it to string. And uh, maybe the playwright team has to a uh, little bit improve the uh, assertions, uh, error message because last time it wasn't really clear, right? So, so it, it wasn't pretty clear, but then, you know, uh, yeah, I hopefully they will improve uh, this for a period of time. But then after changing this to string, this got passed. So this is how you could use APIs. Uh, you can hit APIs using this request uh, variable. That, uh, that's basically your API request context. Um, yeah, I hope this video is useful. You could, uh, I'll see you guys in another great video. Bye.